It's Nolan. What's going on, beautiful people? It's the kid Jay Nolan here. Welcome back to another episode of Inside the Industry, your number one source for music and entertainment commentary and breakdowns. Hey, man. First thing before we get into the show, I got to give a big shout out to Miss Sonya Pearson. She sent the super chat yesterday, said drop that lotto. That's my song. So she definitely put in a request and said, hey, I need to hear it. So we're going to start the show off with that. Then we're going to get into some things over here. All right. As y'all can see, we got the people over here. That's not the entire show, but it's a pretty light news day. I'm going to be honest with y'all. So we're going to try to make it do what it do. I still got to come and give y'all the entertainment that y'all bargain for. I always show up and show out. So, hey, I appreciate y'all tuning in. But let's get to this lotto for Miss Sonia to make sure that she gets what she came for. And then we're going to get to the rest of the show. All right. Much love. Ooh, ooh, yeah. When I done came up out the bottom ooh, ooh, yeah. Got fresh like I just hit the lotto ooh, ooh, yeah. They say money can't fix all your problems ooh, ooh, yeah. But I say throw it in my wallet hey, ooh, I take When I done came up out the bottom ooh, ooh, yeah. Got fresh like I just hit the lotto, hit the lotto yeah. They say money can't fix all your problems ooh, ooh, yeah. But I say throw it yeah. in my wallet yeah. Shout out to Miss Sonya. Shout out to the super crew, super uh, insiders. Shout out to the Cash App crew that continues to support the channel inside the industry and everything. Without y'all contributions, man, you know, we would just be doing this for fun and doing this for entertainment purposes. But I'm, I'm really appreciative of those that pour into what we're doing over here. It's definitely something that doesn't go unseen. And um, I just want to make sure everybody feels appreciated. Now, first thing on the docket today is Hot Boys rapper, former Hot Boys rapper, BG. He's going through a rough time right now, unfortunately. You know, he spent a very long time in prison for years. Um, and now that he's back out trying to rebuild his life, he's facing even more issues with the law, unfortunately. It seems that he could possibly be sent back to prison due to a probation violation. And I'm not even going to really fault him so much on this. Unfortunately, it seems like they're putting all of these different little roadblocks in his way to make him stumble and find himself back in Louisiana prison. But hopefully, you know, things can get worked out. So let's get into it. OK. So Christopher Dorsey, also known as BG, you know, he's in uh, about two months into his supervised release from federal prison on gun charges. Um and unfortunately, he's being charged with violating the terms of his supervision after performing alongside other prominent entertainers without permission from the authorities. All right. So I'm guessing this would be his parole officer or, or probation. A federal judge ordered Christopher Dorsey, a.k.a. BG, who once belonged to Cash Money Records, released on his own recognizance at, on Wednesday after his arrest on the charges record show. So the judge ordered him to be released on his own recognizance. Okay, cool. They say, although Dorsey 43 was let out of custody, pending the outcome of the case relatively quickly, his latest legal peril set off a dialogue in some circles about whether authorities are going overboard, enforcing the technicalities of his supervised release. Um, when all Dorsey is alleged to, to have done is try to reestablish himself as an artist. Federal probation officer wrote in papers that he was supposed to obtain prior written and written approval before entering self-employment. So he's been released from prison. He goes back to doing what he was doing before he got locked up, which is becoming or being a rapper entertainer. He's already established in this space. All he has to do is replug himself in and try to find his footing, try to get his buzz back. He's been working with numerous different rappers. A lot of people are trying to get him near them, you know, trying to get his money back up to take care of his family. And unfortunately, they're making it hard for him, right? They say Dorsey had not done that before performing at a concert in Las Vegas alongside Lil Boosie on February 8th. He also had not obtained such permission while he was living in the halfway house back in December. He published the album Choppers and Bricks alongside fellow rapper Gucci Mane. Additionally, those on federal supervised release are generally required to refrain from associating with certain unnecessary people. Right. Including those that may have prior felony convictions. 
Authorities took exception to the fact that both Lil Boosie and Gucci Mane have prior felony convictions, including, respectively, possession with intent to distribute a controlled substance, as well as possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. Lil Boosie also has pending felony possession on firearms charges in California, according to court records. So they're making it seem as though or making it just known that, hey, you got out of prison and you're aligning yourself with other known felons, although they may be musicians and entertainers within your profession. We see them as nothing but felons. So. No. Right. Furthermore, BG put out a video on YouTube on February 16th titled Really Understand, along with another called Yellow Tape in collaboration with rapper Kid Kid. And they're basically just giving a timeline of all of the different music that he's released, music videos or people he's collaborated with without getting express clearance from his probation officer. Right. But again, this is what he's done his whole life. This man probably ain't had no other job except shoveling goddamn whatever y'all had him doing in the joint. Um, Dorsey's AKA BG, his probation officer described asking the musician about his employment choices, as well as telling him that he needed to find other work. According to the officer, his response was, I'm a rapper. That is my profession. Unfortunately, the officer applied a warrant to arrest him on March 21st, saying he had violated multiple conditions of his supervised release. U.S. District Judge Susie Morgan of New Orleans um, signed off on it a day later. BG was arrested in Las Vegas and appeared in a federal courthouse there on Wednesday. After being ordered released on his own recognizance, he was told to appear in federal court in New Orleans as required, while officials deliberate whether or not to revoke his supervised release and re and reincarcerate him. Screw, whoa, 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 reincarcerate. We ain't going to be doing that, goddamn reincarcerate. That's it. Sound crazy. All right. So, again, he's at risk of going back into prison. Right. In an Instagram post, BG has said, after paying my debt to society, I come home and I'm still not free. I've been doing everything the right way. And it seems like that ain't enough. OK. He also has put up another post. Um, where he said something similar, he says, it's never been easy being Jeezy, but I'm real. So it might look that way. I always thrive under pressure and fight back harder when my back against the wall. I came too far to give up or lay down. The real going to keep riding with me and my haters going to keep hating on me. I'm here for it all. So definitely got to wish BG all the best in his legal perils. You know what I'm saying? It's pretty fucked up how they do people, man. Like they railroad you out. Like he went to, he went to prison for a crime that, he still has remained very steadfast about never doing. Unfortunately, it just, hey, it just happened. I think he gave a firearm to somebody, tried to hide, the, hide a gun or some shit. Whatever the case may be, he made it out. He got out. They let him, uh, they used his time served. And now that he's going back and trying to make a living for himself, doing what he's been able to do to live, for his entire life since he was damn near a teenager. Um, now they're trying to say you were supposed to get express paperwork signed and clearance, which, hey, if you if you skip the process, you skip the process. I got to be honest about that part. You got to be accountable for that. But what did y'all expect this man to go do? Work at McDonald's? Go put a uh, fucking application in at the laundromat? Like, what did y'all thought? What did y'all think he was going to do? So, Definitely feels a bit biased, feels like the probation officer knew exactly what he was going to do and was like, soon as he does it, I'm going to catch his ass in the act. We're going to get you back in them greens, nigga. And we ain't talking about no collars for Easter. So that's what's going on with BG. Hopefully he can get a good lawyer or something that can fight this because I'm sure he needs to be the example out there to let people know that you do still have rights. You still have the opportunity to fight the opportunity to make things, um, you know, smoother in your transition back into society. Because if somebody is pick, basically picking on you, you should be able to defend yourself in a legal course, right? Um, 
So I hope I hope he's able to fight this, get away, you know what I'm saying, scot-free, go back to what he's doing. I mean, it's not like he's got a whole heap of people that are rushing to go hear his music. But if that if, if that's what's going to feed him, if he's able to get booked to do shows, do, you know, open up on other people's concerts, make appearances, get some feature bags, you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people are just getting him on their song so that they can pay him so that he can get his money up. I think he needs to go off and create a podcast and talk about his experience over the course of the last, you know, 15 years or so. That's what I was saying he should have done from the jump. But again, they're making it hard because they said, hey, you never got clearance to be self-employed. It's it's almost on some uh some power force type shit. You know what I'm saying? My boy with the barber shop and I got down PO keep coming in, fucking with him, expecting him to go back and do some wild shit. He almost didn't even want to let him become a barber getting out the joint like nah i see you ain't been uh i see you ain't been filing no applications nowhere he said nigga i own my own business like what the fuck going on so it feels very much like that and of course to see that played out on the silver screen you would have to see others that have gone through the same thing so again wishing bg all the best okay um Yesterday, I spoke about Al B. Shore and his allegations on Diddy. 50 Cent came out and had a response for Al B. Shore. I'm going to read what he said. And Al B. Shore had a long response for 50. So let's get into that. Okay. So 50 Cent says, man, Diddy got your head cracked. Wait, I'm not going to lie. Some of this ish is funny to me. LOL. Why nobody said nothing about this fool but me? So... 50 Cent is basically making fun of Al B. Shore saying you didn't want to say nothing before, but now that he done cracked your head, you want to come out and try to say some shit. Al B. Shore had a few words for uh, Mr. Get Rich or Die Trying, though. He says, Fifth, you already know. Everybody talking grimy, but miss the hidden July 2012 allhiphop.com story when I reached out to all law enforcement agencies to assist and spat all this current activity verbatim. Like Nostradamus, then silence. Niggas called him crazy. Not so crazy after all, huh? Andre Harrell also asked him to co-executive produce the Uptown Records story and soundtrack. And now he's ghost. Andre Harrell is dead. Okay, happy Easter. Okay, so let me see if I can pull up this old story from I'll be sure. Um back in 2012 when he spoke on some of these things because that's pretty interesting to me. You know what I mean? I was able to dig up the old article. It is, in fact, from 2012, and they say hip-hop rumors. Is I'll be sure going crazy or dissing Diddy or both? Okay, they say first things first, Diddy has a son by way of Kim Porter. His name is Quincy, and his biological father is Al B. Shore. Now, Diddy has been helping Quincy with his career and also introducing him recently as his son. Now, Quincy and Al B. Shore have not had a good relationship, and if you Google, there is a lot on it. In fact, two years ago, Quincy penned a letter to his father, Al B., when he was 17, but proclaimed Diddy as his real father and father figure. So a day or so ago, Al B. Shore wrote a very cryptic letter of his own. You really have to read it to understand or not understand, they say. But there's a lot of speculation as to who he could be talking to. And the list is a short one. At any rate, if somebody is really trying to kill you, call the cops, your thugs or stay in church. I can only imagine he's talking about Diddy. So whomever wrote this article. Sheesh. <laughs> So they the uh, the the letter from Al B. Shore reads, and this is from 2012. He says, I want to say that I love you from the bottom of my heart and I appreciate the consistent love from you over the years musically and all else. I'm originally a hustler from the streets of Mount Vernon, but from very humble beginnings, a loving mom who made sure I went in 100 percent on all and made something of the music craft that I've loved dearly. I thank you for sharing it with me over the years. I am just a human being, not perfect, but loves hard and appreciates all that God has allowed to happen in my life. Even my enemies, specifically the wealthy ones, 
that can't help but be jealous of me and even the broke ones that have entered my life with ulterior motives, which are most because of my trusting, giving spirit and willingness to help everyone, whether they deserved it or not. From getting artists record deals and them selling millions of records to helping those from being put out into the street or feeding them when they claim they have no food. And I ask for nothing. I've come to find out that there is someone very jealous and quote unquote bad people out there that you all know, love and worship at times that are so jealous of me and doing some very bad things to me, like stalking my place of rest and even faking as if they are workers for major cable companies, etc. We all are getting the hint by now. They've they've also gotten to people closest to me, exes, co-workers, fakers and plants by playing games, threatening to kill them first. If the turn, if what threatening to kill them first, if they turn them in and or paying them money, if they can get me to show up by telling me they are in need and seeing if I'll drop everything to help as well as offering them things they can't refuse in their desperate lives, which makes them complete trash when they accept. They've even gone as far as getting them implants, devices and cameras watching me at home and to follow me around. And they communicate and feed them lines by walkie talkies to try and set me up, etc. Even renting a place in my neighborhood. The best part of why God is so amazing is that I now know exactly why the idiots and what who the idiots are and the fake alias are. And I wish them all God speak. So FYI. If I, Al B. Shore, a.k.a. Al Brown, is found dead, please contact my attorney, Arthur Aronson, and he will have all of the information on everyone, including their own closets emptied out and the main culprit funding it all. I will share who the key players are with you. So as I said, if I am found dead, you will know the who, what, shortly after. Since they seem to think that it's a joke or that I am joking, We will find out who's really from Mount Vernon and not faking it. As I said, continue to F with a hungry, wounded animal in the woods with nothing to lose and you will eventually get eaten. All involved and my favorite Bodie Bear, rest in peace. To my sons, I love you severely. So as you can see back in 2012, he wrote this letter basically alleging and basically saying without saying that Diddy was sending people into his uh, circumference, trying to get them to trick him into either offering some sort of charity, give them uh, money if they need it, helping them get off the street. He says that Diddy was allegedly sending basically agents, you know, people with wires, people with devices implanted into their body. Uh, Sounds like some Mark of the Beast shit. We still ain't even got there. I don't know. But at least I know that I'll be sure has been very consistently weird. You know what I mean? Now, I'm not saying Diddy ain't been on his trail because it's 12 years later and he's still saying the same shit or trying to say the same shit without saying shit. You know, but he says, hey, 50, you're a little bit too late, my brother. I've been on this. Of course, as you know, he put bad in quotations he also talked about who's really from mount vernon which is where diddy is from he claims harlem but he was actually raised primarily in mount vernon due to issues with his father street credibility street history so there we have that i said my piece on al be sure last night i really don't want to spend more time on him than needed so that's what we've got we'll see if he ever gets clearance on his documentary, his life story, or whatever it is that he's trying to put together to where he can name all of these people who's funding it, all of the players, because holding on to this information for damn near 12, 13 years, and we still haven't heard anything. It's about time to let that shit out, my brother. You know what I'm saying? But that's just how I see it. Now, in lighter news, 
We've got Miss Pretty V coming out talking about how hard it is for comedians to thrive today in 2024 due to the sensitivity of the audience. She claims that you can't talk about certain celebrities. You can't talk about this person. You can't talk about gay people. You can't talk about LGBTQ. You can't talk about nobody because everybody's so sensitive. And she's basically saying that she's not going to follow those guidelines. She's going to continue to do her thing and hopefully bring love, light, and healing through the act of comedy. I'm going to let Pretty V say what she has to say, and then I will give my response in just a few moments, okay? So let's hear what Pretty V's saying. I'm a comedian, you guys. Again, I don't know anything about what's going on. I just know what I'm seeing, and I know, like, you know, it's... I, we, no, one, no one should not play with nobody's life, you know? No one should ever you know, make anybody feel comfortable and all that good stuff. So I get it, you know, but for me as a comedian, as an all-purpose entertainer, that ain't got nothing to do with me, you know, um, at the end of the day. And I love who loves me and I have great relationships with good people. So I, I, I'm, I'm just doing what I do best and that's to make the world laugh and actually bring some laughter to what's happening. Um, so if anybody feels offended, from my last post or they're like oh, why she talked about that nigga? like that us stay away from that then y'all could you know unfollow me you know um because this world is so sensitive um you can't talk about gays you can't talk about um lgbtq you can't talk about you know whatever these things are it, it's happening in real life like it's happening in real life like i get it it's what's around you can't talk about different people you gotta stay away from these celebrities you can't talk about that you can't talk about but this is happening in real life and as comedians and as entertainers we should be able to tap in and talk about these things and bring some form of laughter to a situation that might be heavy so that's my job and my job is also to bring healing is laughter laughter is healing so whatever people i could pull into that and let them know about me and then tap into the word of god i'm gonna do all of that i'm a all right so we have pretty v there and she's talking about i told you what she's talking about now <clears throat> she seems to be getting some some flack here based on what she had to say um, number one, I see people questioning, since when are you a comedian? And I think this is a very valid question. I've never been to a Pretty V show. I'm sure she does them. But I've only really seen Pretty V, you know, online, basically jumping around, dancing, you know, doing doing the uh, the petite twerks. We've seen her try to do um, fake New York accent, battle rap accent. You know, she's a skit person. And I think... I would call her more of a comedic skit person. I know that's not like a an official job title, but today I think we are a little bit too liberal with the term comedian, right? A comedian is somebody who is supposed to be funny, but I think that there's a professionalism that comes with being a comedian and you don't necessarily have to have a special on Netflix or anything of that like to be labeled a comedian, but you got to go out and gig. You know, you got to go out and cut your teeth in these clubs and actually get in front of comedy crowds, comedy clubs, comedy theaters, etc. Again, I don't know if she does that. I know that she's been doing some acting. I know that she shows up on a lot of red carpets. I know that she's um, done a lot of skits. Right. But I think. She's done hosting and she's good at the things that she's done. I'm not taking nothing away from her. I just don't look at her as a standard comedian, especially not somebody who should be stepping into the fold, trying to jump in and tackle issues. Like, that's not you. That's not your brand. You don't tackle no issues. You're a clown. I say that with all love and respect. Um, I don't see you in the same vein as a Chris Rock. I don't see you in the same vein as a Dave Chappelle. And we can talk about Dave Chappelle another time about how his comedy has devolved and turned into some weird form of storytelling um but you're not that um i don't see you as a burning mac a s'more i don't see you as a monique 
right? So when you start trying to talk about other celebrities, yeah, there could be an issue. When you start talking about gay people um, or LGBTQ, I think there's a tasteful way to have them play a role in your jokes or ha have them play a role in your comedy. But see, that's the thing about today's quote unquote artists and creatives. A lot of you motherfuckers really ain't that creative. If you don't know how to craft a tasteful joke that can take things that are going on in real life, be it from anyone from any specific background or gender or, you know, group in society. If you don't know how to make that funny without offending people or without going too far, that's an indictment on your actual craft. Right. Maybe, like I said, you got to go and do the comedy clubs Work on your bits. That's what the pros do. They work on their bits. They go in front of crowds with five people, two people, three people, ten people maybe. See how people are, are taken to the bits. Oh, that didn't that didn't go over well, blah, blah, blah. Let me modify it. Let me change it. Let me fix it. All right, now I can say this and make it funny without it being offensive or I can make it funnier without it being so serious or I can make it funny without disparaging this person that's your job you don't get to be reckless you don't get to be disrespectful you get to learn as you go and you're not gonna get canceled right we've seen cancellation you got to do some real heinous shit in this world to get canceled unless your name is Azalea Banks who we're gonna get to in a minute you're not going to get canceled. And she only got canceled because she wasn't nowhere to begin with. You know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> so my my biggest piece of advice to you, Miss Pretty V, is study the craft. Study the art form of comedy. Study those who came before you. Study those who are excelling in the space right now. And again, if you can't come up with jokes without disparaging whole groups of people, especially those that are marginalized in this country. Um, you might want to step off the stage. I haven't seen you on one, but whatever ones you're stepping on, you may want to go ahead and click your heels and remove yourself. Okay. That's what I've got for you. Much love and respect. I'm wishing you all the best. I've laughed at some of your videos. Okay. In other news, we've got sweetie. She's coming back. After the success of Rich Tivity, she's actually coming back with a new song called Nani. Unfortunately, I cannot play it for y'all because I do believe that this is something that's going to be dropping very soon. And I don't want no copyright smoke. But just know the song actually sounds pretty good. Sounds like she's leaning more into the pop rap genre. I think that's a very good move for her. I saw some people that were trying to say somebody got to let her know that, she, that she's not good. But then I saw a very good point in the comments as well. Somebody said, let me just go through some of these comments, right? Someone here says, I appreciate that she makes girly music. Tired of hearing chicks saying they got the 30 in the purse and calling me a munch in the club, scaring me and my homeboys, right? Somebody else says, I hope she never stops going no matter what the critics say. Oh, and I like the way this is sounding. Young lady here says, Sweetie makes music for pretty girls to vibe to while they get ready. Mm. That's a perspective. We don't ever think about what the, what the pretty ladies need to amp themselves up, to get themselves all the way did. Make them appearances. Right? Someone else says, she makes cute doing my makeup and vibing out music. Another one, I just love that she in her own lane and just be vibing, making music for the pretty girls. Someone else says, this is the kind of song that plays in clothing stores, smile and shop. So I think these are very good points. I'm not expecting Sweetie to be a lyricist. I'm not expecting her to be a gangster. I'm not expecting her to go out there and be like Glorilla and Sexy Red. I think when she's tried to do that or tried to delve into their lane, that's actually when she goes wrong. So we'll see how this Nani does. You could go on her page. You can go on either her Twitter or her Instagram to hear it. I think it sounds pretty good. Again, it's kind of delving into the poppy rap 
which I think is what's best for her. She doesn't need to be no street chick. She doesn't need to be no goddamn lotto. She don't need to be none of that. People already find her attractive. All she got to do is play that up. And that's what works for her. So salute to Sweetie. It doesn't sound bad. We got to hear more of the raps. The hook is what is basically circulating right now. And if I end up not liking the song, I'm going to come back and I'm going to renege and I'm going to take all this shit back. Y'all know how I do. I don't give a fuck. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> the preview sounded good to me. Now that I've heard the full thing, it's trash. I ain't got no problem saying that, but I'm not going to set her up for that type of failure. So we will see when it drops. All right. Now, I spoke about Azalea Banks earlier. We're going to get into her and her assessment of Co a Cowboy Carter. I almost said goddamn Coach Carter. She Cowboy Carter by Beyonce. I don't need no beehive. You know what I'm saying? Playing with me because I actually like the album and I keep up with her news more than probably a lot of other YouTubers out there. So please don't come for me because I don't want to have to bust shots at y'all neither. OK, so Azalea Banks shared a scathing review of Beyonce's new album shortly after the March 29th release. She came online and offered some scorching critiques about the project in her Instagram stories, addressing collaborations, calling the themes redundant and saying the lyrics sounded very forced. So. Let's get to it, y'all. She says themes redundant. The lyrics are really forced. Album is too long. Plus, who is this imaginary adversary Sis thinks still wants to hump on Jay in 2024? You know, <laughs> on the surface, saying who the imaginary adversary is trying to hump on Jay-Z, you would think, ah, oh, maybe she got something going. But there's, I've seen a lot of women on Twitter that, depending on the angle they catch the picture of Jay-Z, they be like, hey, he's a very attractive man. So I think everybody got to just let people be who they are for the most part. Again, I always say, find me a, find me a flattering photo of Azalea Banks. You know, some people may not like when I say that. She don't even got HD photos in 2024, man. That's the, that's the crazy part. Anyway, she says she's got to find new content. And what about you? What about the content of what you speak about? You just seem to go hard on people. All you do is look for shit to complain and shit on. Anyway, she says, nobody, and I mean nobody, thinks he's even remotely attractive. Started skipping around the records. Great work from the band, producers, engineers. Cool. And interesting choices on the Sonics. Might be her most sonically cool attempt at being arty. But the production engineering was more impressive than any of her performance on any of the records. The Miley collab was on brand, but random seeing as we know those two are not kicking it on the regular. Are you fucking stupid? Who is kicking it with Beyonce on the record in life? I don't even think her mama is kicking it with her on the regular like that. And we know how close they are. And I'm sure they're always they're, they're together. But I mean, come on, yo. Miley Cyrus, Beyonce. Why, why would you? Who even looks at that? I don't see <laughs> Chloe and Offset collaboration and say, I'm sure they don't hang out. Why would they make this song? I don't see Drake and four bats. You know what I'm saying? Drake just signed this guy. I don't see them being best friends when Drake is pushing 40 and this nigga's 22. What the fuck could they really have in common like that? But that doesn't mean that they can't do business together. Are you dumb? Like, come on. You and Dr. Luke ain't kicking it like that. But that's who was producing some of your shit, wasn't he? Anyway. Um, she says, started dozing off. That high key should have been Beyonce and Kelly Rowland. I wanted to hear Kelly on there, too. I actually felt like I did hear Kelly on there a couple times in the background vocals, but maybe my mind was playing tricks on me. There is some speculation about a Destiny's Child song or version of one of the songs coming out in the deluxe. So maybe that's something we're getting as well. She says, for culture's sake, Def should have had Taylor Swift and Casey Musgraves on there. It's what the people wanted. Who gives a fuck what the people wanted? She gave her what she wanted to give to the people. 
Anyway, she says, I personally would have jumped out my seat for a K for a KT Kunstall appearance. A strong Dr. Luke power ballad was missing like low skip skip. I really don't like rap Beyonce dozed off again. And now I'm going to sleep. Coming from somebody who ain't put out music in how long. All you do is critique motherfuckers. Where is your like I said yesterday, if you ain't shit and get off the pot, man, what you got for the people? Where your fans at? They've been sitting out here waiting. They like, damn, Broke with Expensive Taste came out damn near 20 years ago now. Shit. Are you rich with Expensive Taste yet or are you still broke? Come on, man. Let's 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 cut the shiz E. So from there. Um, she says, suddenly I see is one of my favorite songs, Katie Tunstall. I'm still banging that John. You know how to craft such joyful traveling and effervescent melody. So she's given her credit and goes back to shitting on Beyonce. Somebody says Beyonce got condos in her head for real. She jumps out and says, because I love B. But she thinks getting others to give her a B aesthetic is the way to get it. So now she's accusing Beyonce of stealing her style as if Beyonce really gives two shits about your existence in this here land. She says Beyonce's last five projects have literally been Azalea Banks tributes like sis. Just ask me what's actually cool and I will tell you. Beyonce has been doing this shit since before we even knew who you were. Did we not see the single ladies video and how she was giving it up with those dancers that were in that video? Is that not why Kanye came out and snatched the motherfucking mic from Taylor Swift to begin with? Who are you? What have you done? You have not done enough out here. You are an underground blog rapper that never got where you were supposed to go. There's nothing wrong with that, but you talking too greasy. Especially when you try to make the accusation that somebody is filtering style from you personally. What is your style? What is your aesthetic? The only thing we know about you is you rapped on house beats. You even gave that up and started rapping on trap beats sounding like ass cheeks and haven't gone back to the style that people originally loved you for. I hate to go in on you, but you deserve it. Talking about what's actually cool. If you knew what was actually cool, you would be actually out here doing something with your time. Anyway, she says, I'm not one of those dumb hoes Jay-Z cosigns that, sh that show you fake love and then be smashing him behind your back. She thinks I can't see that all her artistic moves are based out of the fear of that nigga's wandering eye. I'm not impressed by him, sis. We didn't even have a Jay-Z appearance on the album. Anyway, she says, like, I see all your stylists following my page. Maybe they enjoyed the two songs that you put out. I noticed all the weird little signals. Interest to Texas Hold'em video is literally beginning of heavy metal and reflective. There's a lot of reflective. Man, come on. All your dancers talking about you warming up to young Rapunzel. Stop being weird, sis. Again, she might like two of your songs. If you can kiss Adele's ass and give Shakira props, but still in 2024 are on some crabs in a barrel sh with other black female artists, you're missing the entire point. Whoever is advising you really doesn't understand that you ain't some pop hoe. Well, guess what? There's plenty of black female artists all over the Cowboy Carter album, and you're feeling some type of way because you didn't get invited to the party, and you never will. The last party you got invited to, I thought somebody throw your ass out. I could have swore Rizzo was trying to get you to become an, a, a fucking star on the TV screen. And Leonardo DiCaprio or somebody like that. Was it Leo or was it fucking uh, the nigga from American Gangster, the white dude? One of them motherfuckers said, get this motherfucker out here, out of here before I kill him. So it seems to me that you are the problem. But she keeps going. But be one, please. She says, but be one if you please, as in be a pop -up. I love Black is King. That weird gay baiting shit you did last record was really not needed. Gay baiting? Well, <laughs> this is this is why you're so problematic. Your entire career, which isn't that much of a career, 
is founded upon gay baiting. And after you actually baited those people in and acted like you gave a fuck about them, you have come out hundreds of times showing just how much you don't even respect your own audience. But you're mad at somebody who's actually giving them a soundtrack, giving them something to listen to, giving them something to goddamn get they get they fucking uh, rocks off, go enjoy a goddamn show, get out here and actually have some motivation, have some music to bump that isn't disparaging these people. And you feel some type of way because you've lost your moment. You've lost your momentum. You've lost your mojo. As if you really had a full bottle of that shit anyway. You got to calm down. She says, whatever late white white gay told you to reference Moi Renee, then the disrespect of having legendary Kevin Jay-Z prodigy perform from the pit. Girl, no. And stop hiding your son from the world, sis. People will find out sooner or later, and you're really going to look like a piece of sh for being ashamed of your own child. Again, you are one of the dumbest people walking this earth. You know a lot of big words, but you ain't smart. <laughs> I'm hungry as a motherfucker, y'all. Like, what the hell going on, man? You out here talking crazy and talking greasy. You what why why are you think why do you think she's hiding her child? Right? Like it's 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 really it's really embarrassing to know because you're actually very talented, right? You did a great job when you first came on the scene. A two on two, chicky chicky chicky. You know what I'm saying? You did all the chicky 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 cheese ass raps you could do to get people on your on your back, and you can't even goddamn do it no more. You know what I'm saying? Now I got people coming onto my videos talking about, oh, that new Doji record sounds like Azalea Banks. Okay, who gives a fuck? She gave Azalea Banks credit, wanted to fuck with the lady, but she was too mad, too in her feelings to want to give it up to a new artist. That was her mistake. That was her opportunity because I already told y'all she ain't have enough crunk juice in her goddamn can to begin with. So, yeah, man. That's my assessment of Miss Azalea Banks. You could take that shit back where you where you came from. Wishing you all the best. The people back in New York still don't fuck with you. People out in London where you've been living all this time still don't fuck with you. So I'm wishing you the best. Wishing you love and light, blessings, clarity, all of those things. Hope your closet is clean, literally. Not filled with cat blood. But uh, that's what we've got for y'all on the show today. All right? Be sure to like and share this video. If this is your first time seeing me on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit the post notification bell for all updates. I will see y'all on the next one. I appreciate y'all, all my insiders. If you are not subscribed to the channel yet, go ahead and hit that down there. Hit all post notifications. Become an insider. You don't want to be waiting outside the club. You know what I'm saying? Who wants to wait outside the club when you can be VIP? Go ahead and just become an insider, all right? Much love and respect. I will catch y'all later. Peace. King of my city in cul de sac. Come and I swing like soldier rat. Leading my people like quarterback. Why I study this shit, I'm an almanac. Had to get up and grind. Knowledge is booming, I'm here to apply. Came with the chip and the dip, it just single the mind. We finna do more to survive. I need my check. Spinning the block for the gouda, we hitting the jeweler to flood out the net. We don't do beef for computers, I'm straight out the sewer, we come when you rest. Niggas be looking perplexed, so keeping my foot on their neck. No map, I trust my gut for the quest. With drama, I'm fully abreast. I was ready for years and they doubted me. All of a sudden, they tell me they proud of me. I've been dropping these haters like calories. Cross my I came back with some battery, stand for my honor. But you run no gunner, packing a stick with a drummer. Wanna catch my bad one fumble? I done came too far to be humble.